Good morning. Thanks for joining us again this Sunday. Just make yourself at home wherever you are. Let's just enjoy God's presence. Amen. We're going to sing about God's amazing.
right where you are, the presence of God is there. Wherever it may be, you can lift up those hands and just begin to give Him glory and give God praise. Because He is worthy today. How wide, how deep, how vast is God's love for you today. Oh, it reaches, it reaches out to us this morning. We just thank God for it. We give God praise for it today. As we worship Him, as we give Him glory, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What a gracious and loving God you are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Isn't it awesome to know today that there's no, there's no distance in prayer, there's no distance in worship. doesn't matter where we are. We can lift our hands and begin to give glory and praise unto our God. Again, as Michelle said earlier, we're so glad you're here uh, with us today. Again, just to lift up the name of the Lord and declare the word of the Lord today. Oh, we may, may be different the things that we're doing and having to experience, but God is still the same. God never changes. His love never changes. His power never changes. And so today we just come rejoicing. And like we always do, come on, let's declare our faith today. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. For great is our God and greatly is he to be praised. I am his child. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Therefore, no weapon which is formed against me shall prosper. The weapons of my warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of the enemy's strongholds. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm victorious because I walk by faith and not by sight. And greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. And give praise to God. He's worthy today. And we give praise unto his name. What a mighty God we serve. Well, again, I'm, I'm just thrilled that we have this time together today. Uh, again, it's, it's unusual. These are unusual times. But I'm glad today that I know that God is faithful. God is in control. And so today I want to just share a, a brief word with you to encourage you in your faith, to help you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And if you would, would you take your Bibles, if you have them there, and turn with me to Psalms chapter 31. Psalms chapter 31. And I want to read verse 15. Psalms 31 and verse 15. It says, my times are in your hand. This is David speaking here. He said, my times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies. We know that this virus is an enemy. So David said, and we say today, deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. The message I want to share with you this morning is this. My times are in your hands. My times, your times are in his hands. Let's pray. Father, I'm so grateful today that we can be here, that we can communicate that word of the Lord, that we can worship. God, we thank you for the ability today to do that. And I pray, Lord, that everyone who may be listening today and I pray, God, that they will sense again such an anointing of the Holy Spirit. That, Lord, right now, that they will just feel the power of God moving in their hearts and moving in their lives. And that your word again today will not return, boy, but will accomplish in every person's life today that which you would please it to accomplish. And we'll be careful to give you all praise and all glory for it. Because it's all about you. It's all about you, God. So we thank you today in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. My times are in your hands. You know, I've rem I'm reminded this morning of, of Paul's word to the Philippian believers. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 3, Paul said, Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. I want to tell you something. I've been thinking of you, those of you who are a part of family life, been thinking about my friends and my family across this nation. And I've been thinking about the people of God in general all this week. And I'm thanking God for you. I'm thanking God for your family. And I'm praying that he would encourage you in your faith. And that your declaration would continue to be, God's got this. Amen. God's got this. Paul, the apostle, while he sat in prison. Many may be feeling like that today. But while he sat in prison, he declared a tremendous truth. While he himself was in a very difficult and trying place. When he said in 2 Timothy 1.12, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. For I know in whom I have believed. And am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. You know, in times like these, in a day like this, beloved, we are going to have to know in whom we believe. There's many voices speaking right now with people saying a lot of things concerning this virus and, and what's going to happen. Oh yeah, there's those negative doomsday people that always look to the worst of outcomes, predicting the apocalypse. Can I just say something to you this morning out of love? And it really is. One of the worst things you could do is spend a lot of time on the internet. Looking for some kind of answers as to this virus. As to the cause of it. And for the cure of it. I tell you it can get confusing. It can, it can be a bit unnerving. And, and even frightening if, you try, if you're trying to process all of this. You've probably found yourself saying this. Who am I supposed to believe? Ultimately, beloved, we must believe in the power of God's truth. In the promises of his word declaring as Psalm 91 verses 10 and 11. There shall no evil befall you. Nor any plague or calamity come near your dwelling. For he will give his angels charge over you. To accompany and defend and preserve you in all your ways of obedience and service. The Lord just sort of put this in my heart as I was thinking about this. Instead of spending all that time surfing the web. Start surfing your way through the word of God. Surf through not Psalm 91. And I... And the outcome is going to be much, much better, I promise you. We must stand in faith today. And we must declare with all boldness, I know in whom I believe. And I am persuaded that he is able. Beloved, listen, there is nothing too hard for our God. Nothing. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or even imagine in your mind. As we all commit ourselves to the Lord today, I tell you, he's able to keep us no matter what the time or season that we may find ourselves in. No matter the circumstances of the moment God's able to keep us to keep you in the shelter of his presence 
with the eternal truth that says God will work all things together for our good. Come on, say that right now. God will work all things together for my good. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let me just say right now, thank God for all our doctors and nurses and health care workers, our first responders, and those working tireless, tirelessly to, to help people. And those scientists trying to find a solution to this crisis that we're in. I tell you, I'm praying for them daily. And also for our president, Donald Trump, and his team of doctors and scientists. They are on the front line of this battle. And you know, in reality, you may not have thought of this way before, but in reality, the president, whoever it is, whether it was Obama or whether it was Bush or now it's Trump, whoever it is, the president is the pastor of the nation. And he needs our prayers in spite of how we feel personally and our personal opinion of him. I'm going to tell you something. He's going to have to make some incredibly difficult and critical decisions that only he can make, that only he can make. It falls squarely on his shoulders. Oh, he can get the counsel. He can hear from this one. He can hear from that one, the scientists and, and the doctors and everyone else. But it's going to come down to him making a decision. It falls on his shoulders. And he's going to have to make that decision or those decisions in the next few days that's going to impact all of our lives. All of our lives. So let's pray that God will give him the very wisdom of Solomon as he makes those decisions. Because listen, friend, we cannot be focused on the temporal. We cannot be focused on all of this as our, as our main focus, and that which is before us today, we cannot focus on that. We must know today that God has an eternal, supernatural purpose that is going to come out of all of this. And I'm believing for signs and wonders and miracles to be manifested in our lives, your life and in my life, in this city of Spring, Texas, in this nation and around the world. Yeah. I'm believing for that. That God Almighty would be high and lifted up along with his glory for all to see and that the entire world will know that there is one true and living God and his name is Jehovah. And through his son, Jesus Christ, there is forgiveness of sins and there is life everlasting. Come on, would you lift up your hands right now where you are and shout an amen to that. Amen, amen to that. He is mighty. Amen. That means so be it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, for those who've been around me for any length of time, you've heard me say on many occasions, my time are in your hands. My times are in your hands. You know, it's been a tremendous encouragement in my life. When I, when I don't understand the things happening, and I, I may not have all the answers, much like we're experiencing right now, but at those moments when I don't understand, when I don't quite see the, the whole picture. I lift up my voice to the Lord and I declare my times are in your hands. My times are in your hands. Here in the 31st Psalm, what you find is that for the most part that it's a, a cry out for deliverance out of, of pressing danger and trouble. 
Something very familiar to us right now. But it's a cry out for that, for deliverance out of that. And here you have David once again finding himself facing a time of trouble and difficulty in his life. Now, some think that it was during the period when Saul was, you know, chasing him down and persecuting him. Others think it was during the time of his son's uh, Absalom was when he was rebelling against him. But either way, it was one of those times in David's life where he was going to have to decide how he was going to respond to those difficulties that were around him. And I'll tell you, you've got to love the very first words that he declares in verse 1. He says, in you, O Lord, do I put my trust. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Come on, friend, can you today, in the midst of all that's happening in our lives, can you say those words out loud? In you, O Lord, I do put my trust. Hallelujah. Beloved, listen, when you say those words in confidence, in you, O Lord, I do put my trust. And then in faith you say, I know in whom I believe. I tell you that you've already stepped into that place of overcoming and victory in your life and in your circumstance. Now you may say today, Pastor Scott, how can you be so confident in the declaration of God's got this? Beloved, listen. I can declare those words, God's got this, in the face of difficulty and trouble because of these very words spoken by David when he said, my times are in your hands. You see, if you and I truly believe that our lives are in God's hands, that he is in control, that he is a good and a faithful God. And that his promise is that he will never leave us nor forsake us. How could I say anything else? But God's got this. God's got this. I don't know how long that this will continue to be as it is today. But I do know this. God is faithful. God is faithful. Listen, one thing is for sure, and that is if, as a believer, as a child of God, if we're hearing what the Spirit has to say, Jesus would often say that. It's not that they weren't hearing Him with physical ears. He was speaking to a deeper purpose in them and Jesus would say those who have an ear to hear hear what the spirit has to say yeah. hear in your spirit what he's saying and if we're listening I'm going to tell you something all of us we're discovering that those things we thought were important in our lives those things that we just couldn't do without aren't that important anymore. Right. Right. His voice can be clearly heard. Listen. And I'm closing with this. His voice can be clearly heard in the pages of your Bible. Yes. You say, Pastor, how does God speak to me? You, you say all the time, well, God spoke to me. Did, did he speak to you in an audible voice? No. Sometimes God will speak to me just in a, in, as, as, again, I'm listening for what the Spirit would say. I, I have a sensing in my spirit, and I feel like the Lord's saying something. But I want to tell you, most of the time, you know where I hear God? I hear him right here. That's how this message came about. 
because I heard God saying, you need to let people know that their times are in my hands. And that they know that I do have this, all of this. And that I am working all things together for their good. But I want to tell you this morning, his voice can be clearly heard in the pages of this glorious book, the Word of God. And you need to pray and just say, Holy Spirit, show me. Holy Spirit, reveal to me. Holy Spirit, open my eyes so that I can see. So that I can see what you're saying to me in your Word. Help me to see that truth that will encourage me. That truth that will empower me. That truth that will heal me and make me more than a conqueror through Christ who loved me. Please know today that I'm praying for you. I really am. I'm praying for you. I'm lifting you and your family up before the Lord. Those a part of this church, I call out your name every day to the Lord. And I pray for you. And I pray that God would strengthen you and I lift all of your family up to the Lord, your children, your grandchildren. And I pray that through all of this, through all of this that we are experiencing, that we will be stronger. That we will be more unified. And we'll have even a greater sense of God's glorious presence in our lives. Oh Lord, in you do I put my trust. Heavenly Father, Lord, for every person, God, that is hearing these words, I just pray, God, that they will come alive. That they'll come alive in their spirit. And that, God, that they will realize that you truly do have their lives in the very palms of your hands. That anything that happens to us, any circumstance that we deal with and face like this that we are now, we can be assured, God, that our times, our seasons, our very moments are in your hands. And you're keeping us under the shelter of your wings. As Psalm 91 says, what a glorious truth. And Lord, I do speak that over every person today. Lord, the word of God. You are our rock. You are our fortress. You are our salvation. And we give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pray that you be blessed. I pray that God just keep you. He make his face to shine upon you. And that you know that all things are working together for your good. God bless you.